Hello, everyone. Welcome to Antibody Engineering and Therapeutics Digital Week, brought to you by the producers of the Face-to-Face -face Antibodies event. My name is Adriana Alvarez, and I'll be your host for today's session. First, I'll cover some quick housekeeping items. If you experience difficulties with audio or advancing slides, please refresh your screen with F5. If you're experiencing other issues, hit the question mark button to receive assistance. At any time during the presentation, please submit your questions into the Q&A window on the left-hand side of your screen. In 24 hours, you'll receive a link to watch the recording of this session. You can also download a featured white paper in the resource list box on the right side of your screen. Let's now begin by introducing our speaker from Acro Biosystems. Enang Jang, Product Development Manager. Thank you for joining us today, Enang. Now I'll hand it over to you to begin your presentation. Hi, everyone. This is Enang from Acrobio System. Thank you very much for having me here. It's a great honor for me to have this opportunity to share with you the critical role of SARS CoV 2 spike protein in developing serological tests, drugs, and vaccines for COVID 19. In addition, I would like to talk about what AgroBioSystem has done to help fight against COVID-19. First, I will give you a very brief introduction of myself. My name is Yinan Jiang. I obtained PhD degree in structural biology from Tsinghua University. My PhD studies focused on elucidating the molecular mechanism of virus cell entry and viral immune evasion, including coronaviruses and influenza viruses. Now I am serving as product development manager in AcroBioSystem, in charge of developing SARS-CoV-2 antigen products for research and diagnosis use, and SARS-CoV-2 kit products for research use. Today I will start my presentation with the introduction of the outbreak of COVID-19. COVID-19 pandemic is caused by the emerging coronavirus SARS-CoV-2, and it presents a serious global public health emergency. The first cases of COVID-19 were reported from Wuhan, China in December 2019. According to the World Health Organization, the pandemic is affecting 213 countries and territories around the world and two international conveyances. As of June the 2nd, about 62 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 have been reported and 0.37 million deaths have been caused by this pandemic. In the COVID-19 map offered by John Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center, the red dots represent the confirmed cases of COVID-19, and the larger the red dot, the more confirmed cases in the specific region or country. And you can see that the COVID-19 has spread to most parts of the globe. In addition to the health damage caused by the pandemic, COVID-19 has huge impact on our daily lives. Now we have got used to wearing protective masks and keeping social distance in the public space. COVID-19 is caused by SARS-CoV-2, which belongs to coronavirus. Now let's take a look at the background of this virus species. Coronavirus was first identified by Dr. Almeida in 1964 in St. Thomas Hospital in London. They are a group of enveloped viruses that have a halo or crown-like appearance when viewed under an electron microscope. The genome of coronaviruses are composed of positive strand single-stranded RNA, and their genome size ranges between 27 to 34 kilobases, which is relatively large for RNA viruses. The coronavirus infects mammals and birds and causes various symptoms such as respiratory tract disease and diarrhea. This virus species can be categorized into four genome groups, including alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. And within the beta coronavirus genome group, there are four lineages, including A, B, C, and D. Seven coronaviruses have been reported to be able to infect humans, among them h cov 229 e h cov nl 63 belong to the alpha genome group, and h cov HKU1, h cov OC43 belong to 
any lineage of base genome group. These four coronaviruses can only cause common cold. SARS-CoV and SARS-CoV-2 belong to B lineage, and MERS-CoV belong to C lineage of basic genome group. These three coronaviruses have been shown to be lethal. SARS-CoV-2, which stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, is in the same lineage as SARS-CoV because the two viruses exhibit 80% nucleotide sequence similarity across the genome. Data shows that COVID-19 caused by SARS-CoV-2 is mild in 80% of patients, severe in 13%, and critical in 6%. The most common symptoms of SARS-CoV-2 are fever, fatigue, and dry cough. Less common symptoms include aches and pains, runny nose, sore throat, loss of sense of smell and taste, shortness of breath and diarrhea. It's notable that some infected people may be asymptomatic. In critical cases, COVID-19 can cause severe pneumonia or multiple organ failure and lead to death. SARS-CoV-2 has four main structural proteins. There are spike glycoprotein that form the chrome-like appearance, small envelope glycoprotein, membrane glycoprotein, and the nuclear capsid protein that binds RNA. Today we will focus on the characterization of spike protein in this presentation. In this slide, it shows the comparison between the three lethal coronaviruses. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS, is originated in southern China in 2002. The disease is characterized by high fever which eventually developed into shortness of breath and pneumonia. SARS caused 8,439 cases and 812 deaths in 26 countries, with case fatality rate about 9.6%. From 2004, SARS cases ceased to be reported. In September 2012, the world experienced the emergence of the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome or MERS. The disease is originating in Saudi Arabia and is characterized by mild respiratory syndromes, which could develop into acute respiratory distress syndrome and death. The disease has affected 27 countries, but around 8% of cases have occurred in Saudi Arabia. MERS resulted in 2,519 cases and 866 deaths, with case fatality rate about 34.3%. MERS cases are still being reported, but no major outbreak has been declared since 2015. Compared with SARS and MERS coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2 shows higher transmissibility and lower case fatality rate. The confirmed cases of COVID-19 is 650 times higher than SARS and 2,600 times higher than MERS, with case fatality rate around 6% for now. Now, let's move on to the detailed introduction of SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. This protein is a transmembrane glycoprotein that forms homotrimers protruding from the virus surface. The figure shows the domain structure of spike protein. Spike protein contains 1,273 amino acids, and it can be cleaved into S1 and S2 subunits. S1 subunit is responsible for binding to the host cell receptor. It consists of N-terminal domain, or NTD, and a receptor binding domain, or RBD. S2 subunit mediates fusion of the viral and cellular membrane, which contains fusion peptides, peptide repeat 1, and central helix. Currently, spike protein extracellular domain, including both S1 and S2 subunit, S1 subunit alone, and RBD, have been widely used in the serological test, drug and vaccine development. We will talk about the application of these antigens into details later. Since the structural information of spike protein will support precision vaccine design and the discovery of antiviral therapeutics, several research groups from China and the US 
reported their structural studies of spike protein shortly after the release of the SARS-CoV-2 genome sequence. A team from the University of Texas and Austin introduced two protein mutations in the C-terminal S2 fusion machinery to increase the conformational stability of the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. They obtained a 3.5 angstrom resolution file EM structure of spike extracellular domain in pre-fusion state. They published their work in science. In their paper, they reported that the spike extracellular domain is in trimeric <coughs> Stop, I need to redo it. In their paper, they reported that the spike extracellular domain is in trimeric conformation and the RBD in one protomer is in the up conformation that protrudes out from the trimer surface, which is shown in green. In contrast, the RBD in the other two protomers are in the down conformation that insert into the central cavity of the trimer. When compared with the SARS-CoV protocol, SARS-CoV-2 spike protomer shows high degree of structural homology. A team from the University of Washington found that SARS-CoV spike protein and SARS-CoV-2 spike protein share the same functional host cell receptor, which is angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or ACE2. Using surface plasma resonance, they reported that the ACE2 binds to the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein RBD with about 5 nanomolar affinity, which is about 10-fold higher than ACE2 binding to SARS-CoV by spike protein RBD. The high affinity of SARS-CoV-2 spike protein RBD for ACE2 may be the reason why SARS-CoV-2 displays higher transmissibility than SARS-CoV. A group led by Dr. Xinchuan Wang from Tsinghua University reported the crystal structure of SARS-CoV-2 spike protein RBD bound to the ACE2. In their nature paper, they observed that the overall structure of the SARS-CoV-2 RBD is similar to that of the SARS-CoV RBD. The receptor binding motif in RBD contains most of the contacting residues of SARS-CoV-2 that bind to ACE2. Though the receptor binding motif has more sequence variation between SARS-CoV-2 and SARS-CoV, the overall structure is also highly similar. Additionally, the overall binding mode of the SARS-CoV-2 RBD to ACE2 is also nearly identical to that observed in the determined structure of the SARS-CoV RBD ACE2 complex. To provide the molecular mechanism of the higher binding ability between SARS-CoV-2 RBD and ACE2, the group used structure guided sequence alignment and mapped them to their respective sequences. They found a unique ACE2 interacting residue lysine at position 417 in SARS-CoV-2, which forms subbridge interactions with aspartic acid at position 30 of ACE2. This position is replaced by a valine in the SARS-CoV RBD that fails to participate in ACE2 binding. These subtly different ACE2 interactions may contribute to the difference in binding affinity of the SARS-CoV-2 and the SARS-CoV. A hypothetical model of SARS-CoV-2 spike protein-mediated cell entry based on the structural information was proposed that the spike protein exists as a trimer when it's in the perfusion stage. When one of the spike protein RBD protrudes from the trimer, and exhibits ARP conformation. It combines to ACE2 and triggers the dissociation of S1 subunit from S2 subunit. Then the peptide repeat one from S2 subunit will insert into the cellular membrane and mediate the membrane fusion. From the free energy perspective, the prefusion state of spike protein is metastable, and the transition from prefusion to post-fusion state will lead to the fusion of virus and host cell membranes. After getting to know the structural information of SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, now we will see the application of spike protein in serological tests. At present, the COVID-19 pandemic within the many countries have not yet reached its peak, and the number of cases and deaths are predicted to rise in the coming weeks and months. 
early and accurate diagnosis of COVID-19 is, is essential, not only to ensure appropriate patient care, but also to facilitate identification of SARS-CoV-2 infected people to control disease spread. The etiological diagnosis of SARS-CoV-2 infection is regarded as golden standard for diagnosis, and the nuclear acid testing with real-time PCR has been widely employed. However, high numbers of false negatives have been found in some laboratories, leading to a positive detection rate of RT-PCR around 50% of suspected clinical and epidemiological COVID-19 cases. In addition, nuclear acid testing is operator-restricted, time-consuming, easy to pollution, and expensive. Serological tests can be used to identify whether people have been exposed to a particular pathogen by looking for the presence of antibodies that are produced in response to infection. IgM is first elicited by the immune system in early stage of infection, and then IgG is generated in large quantities after seven days of symptom onset, which can persist in the blood for several weeks or months. Serological tests offer some advantages over real-time PCR. Firstly, human antibodies are much more stable than viral RNA, so serological specimens are less sensitive to spoilage during collection, transport, storage, and testing than real-time PCR. Secondly, because antibodies are typically uniformly distributed in the blood, serological specimens have much less variations than viral RNA specimens, and it can be easily collected. Thirdly, unlike real-time PCR, serological tests can detect past infection because of the long-term existence of antibodies in blood. Therefore, serological test is an efficient supplement of nuclear acid detection, and the demand for serological tests of SARS-CoV-2 is increasing rapidly in order to improve the accuracy of clinical diagnosis and better quantify the number of cases of COVID-19, including those that may be asymptomatic or have recovered. Serological test kit consists of three types, including colloidal global immunoassay, hemiluminescence immunoassay, and ELASA. First, let's take a look at the colloidal global immunoassay. Colloidal global immunoassay is a kind of lateral flow immunoassay. The test strip is made up of four parts, including sample pads, conjugate pads, nitrocellulose membrane, and absorbent pads. Before testing, the gold conjugated antigen is placed on the conjugate pad. Anti-IgG or IgM secondary antibody and anti-antigen antibody are put on nitrocellulose membrane as test line and control line, respectively. When a drop of serum that contains IgG and IgM is put on the sample pad, the antibodies would move into the direction of absorbent pad. If the serum includes the IgG or IgM against the pathogen, these antibodies would bind to the antigens on the conjugated pad and then interact with anti-IgG or IgM secondary antibodies as a test line. Hence, as a test line where gold label protein is accumulated, Red or pink spots can be seen by the naked eye. The colloidal gold immunoassay strip shown here indicates that the serum contains the antibodies against the SARS-CoV-2 and the patients have been infected by the virus. The colloidal gold immunoassay is easy to use and it only takes 15 minutes to see the result. Now, there are four commercial colloidal gold immunoassay kits that have received emergency use authorization from FDA. Although ChemBio Diagnostic System uses nuclear capsid protein in its kit, and the other three companies haven't disclosed this antigen in their products, Acra has got to know that most commercial colloidal gold immunoassay kits are using S1 subunit and RBD as the antigen to detect the antibodies against stop. <clears throat> stop, I need to redo it. Now, there are four commercial colloidal gold immunoassay kits that have received emergency use authorization from FDA. Although ChemBio Diagnostic System uses nuclear capsid protein in its kit, and the other three companies haven't disclosed the antigen in their products, 
Afro has got to know that most commercial corridor going in acid kits are using S1 subunit and RBD as the antigen to detect the anti SARS CoV 2 antibody. So, the chemiluminescent acid is human acid. It belongs to labeled antibody technology. And it labels the antibodies or antigens with the chemiluminescent agents, catalytic luminescent enzymes. When labeled antibodies or antigens are bound with corresponding antigens or antibodies, the luminescent substrates are activated by luminescent agents, catalytic enzymes, and then the released visible light or luminescence of fluor fluorescent substances are detected by luminescent spectral photometer. Up until now, six chemiluminescent immunized kits have been approved by FDA, and notably, Thiosaurin Incorporated combines S1 and S2 subunits to detect the anti SARS CoV 2 antibodies. For the ELASA, it employs similar principle as chemiluminescent immunoassay, except that it uses enzyme labeled antibody or antigen. Now, there are five ELASA kits that have received emergency use authorization from FDA. From the disclosed information about the antigen used in these kits, we get to know that Mount Sinai Laboratory uses RBD to detect anti SARS CoV 2 antibodies. The main advantage of chemiluminescent immunoassay and ELASA is the higher sensitivity compared with colloidal golden assay. But they usually need around one hour to get the result and require instrument or labs to perform this task. Next, we'll cover the use of spike protein in antibody and vaccine development. Due to the continued threat to public health, there is an unprecedented need to manufacture and distribute enough safe and effective vaccines to immunize an extraordinarily large number of individuals in order to protect the entire global community from the SARS-CoV-2. Currently, a variety of methods are being employed to develop vaccines in many countries, and Chinese government is using five technical routes, including inactivated vaccine, recombinant protein vaccine, adenovirus vector vaccine, nuclear acid vaccine, and influenza vector vaccine. From the public office, the antigens used in COVID-19 vaccines are mostly spike protein extra domain because it plays an indispensable role in virus cell entry and represents a target for antibody-mediated neutralization. An adenovirus vector vaccine has been developed by a China-based company called Cancino Biologics, Incorporated. The underlying principle of this vaccine is to use a genetically engineered replication-defective adenovirus as spike vector to express the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. This vaccine has entered phase one clinical trial. Another Chinese company called Clover Biopharmaceuticals has developed a recombinant protein vaccine based on its trimer tech vaccine technology platform, which can generate the coronavirus spike proteins in a native trimeric form for using vaccine. In addition, there is also urgent need for validated therapeutics for COVID-19. Though convalescent patients' plasma has been shown to be effective in clinical improvement of both mild and severe COVID-19 patients, the therapeutic use is limited since plasma cannot be produced on a large scale. Neutralizing monoclonal antibodies may serve as a promising intervention to SARS-CoV-2 due to their scalability and therapeutic effectiveness. Now, there are three major platforms to, for generating monoclonal antibodies. The first one is display technology, in which different microorganisms, including phage, yeast, and bacteria, they are used to display reservoirs of single chain variable antibody fragments, antigen binding fragments, or domain antibodies on their surfaces. And then they can be enriched and isolated by antigen through iterative cycles of timing. The second platform is human immunoglobulin transgenic mice which involves cloning human monoclonal antibody expressing B cells isolated from immunized transgenic mice. The third platform involves the use of human memory B cells as a source of human monoclonal antibody. The memory B cells are obtained from the blood of an individual recovering from a virus infection. These cells are transformed with Epstein-Barr virus 
and then screen for the antigen binding ability. All these three techniques use target antigen to screen the potential neutralizing antibody. And in the case of COVID-19 antibody development, spike protein or RBD is usually employed to be used as the probe. After talking about the application of SARS-CoV-2 antigen in serological tests, drug, and vaccine development, I will be introducing what acrobiotic systems have done to help fight against COVID-19. First, I would like to offer you a brief introduction of acrobiotic systems. Acrobiotic systems is only in 2010, and we are a leading manufacturer of recombinant proteins and other critical reagents to support the development of targeted therapeutics. Acrobiosystems systems is dedicated to accelerating the process of target therapeutic drug development from the starting point of target identification to the end point of clinical trial. Acrobiosystems systems has served over 3,500 customers from around 60 countries and reached out to 20,000 end users from pharmaceutical companies and academic institutes. Acro has established long-term collaboration with big farms such as Pfizer, Novartis, and Johnson Johnson, and well-known academic institutes like NIH. To provide better service to end users, Acro Biosystems has set up two working places at Beijing and Shanghai in China, and three offices in at Boston, St. Joe's, and Newark in the US. With the outbreak of COVID-19 in China, Acrobiosystems Systems responded quickly and finished the design of SARS-CoV-2 antigen products during Chinese Spring Festival and immediately started to produce the antigen after getting back to work. Up until now, we have launched 40 SARS-CoV-2 antigen products and another 20 products are under development. The majority of these antigen products are spike actor domain, S1 subunit, and RBD. ACRO has worked hard on developing products that can be used in serological tests, drug and vaccine development. We have made following efforts to provide high quality products to our customers and help fight against COVID-19, including verifying the trimeric state of our spike ECD protein product, maintaining the spike protein in fully glycosylated form, optimizing the expression construct for spike protein RBD, producing mutant spike protein RBD and developing anti sars cov 2 antibodies. First, let's see how April produced sars cov 2 spike protein in trimeric state. When we are doing paper research about sars cov 2 spike protein, we realize that though coronavirus spike protein appears to be a trimer on viral, the soluble exodomains of spike protein are often monomeric. However, it is important to obtain the trimeric spike protein in vitro because the functional state of spike protein is in trimeric conformation and is indispensable in virus cell entry. To enhance the stability of the prefusion trimeric conformation, we introduced a GSAS substitution at the S1 or S2 fusion cleavage site to maintain the integrity of spike protein. In addition, a fold-on trimerization domain was introduced just to just in the upstream of the predicted transmembrane region to facilitate the trimer formation of spike protein. Acrobiosystems uses its proprietary HAC293 expression platform to produce recombinant spike trimer protein, and the purity of the protein is greater than 90% in SDS page. And the protein migrates as about 200 kilodalton and the reducing conditions due to glycosylation. Since the purity on SDS page cannot indicate the conformational homogeneity of the protein, we perform sac MOS to show that the trimeric S protein is with more than 80% purity, with the molecular rate around 600 to 660 kilodalton. To further characterize the bioactivity of the spike protein, we use surface plasma resonance to measure the binding ability between spike trimer and its host receptor ACE2. The constant dissociation shows around 35 nanomolars, which is consistent with the binding affinity reporting paper. 
We also perform stack mods to compare our SARS-CoV-2 spike protein product with the protein offered by other vendors. As you can see from this slide, in contrast to ACROS trimeric spike protein product with confirmation of purity of 97.59%, the spike protein offered by other vendors are in high polymer form with molecular weight around 4,500 kilodalton. As mentioned before, to generate monoclonal antibodies from transgenic mice, the mice should be immunized with the antigen first. A team from Netherlands employs this strategy to screen neutralizing antibodies against SARS-CoV-2, and they successfully isolated a candidate called 47D11 that shows cross-reactivity against SARS-CoV-2 and SARS-CoV. By using human memory B cells as a source of human monoclonal antibodies, three groups from China have reported their work recently. Two groups used the recombinant RBBS probe and isolate neutralizing antibodies from SARS-CoV-2 infected patients. Biochemical studies have shown that the isolated neutralizing antibodies blocks the interaction between ACE2 and RBD. Further structural studies review that the binding site of antibody on RBD overlap with ACE2. Another group used spike protein as space to isolate neutralizing antibodies from convalescent patients. They successfully isolated one antibody 4A8 that recognized spike protein NTD and exhibits high neutralizing potency against both authentic and pseudotype SARS-CoV-2. Biochemical and structural studies show that 4A8 does not block the interaction between ACE2 and spike protein and hence it functions with a mechanism that is independent of receptor binding inhibition. So this study suggests that the antigen used to be the screening probe is essential for the neutralizing antibody isolation. In one of the studies employing RBD as probe mentioned above, the researchers initially used biomarker to isolate CD27 positive membrane B cell and then in vitro express the monoclonal antibodies producing those B cells. They only found one out of two RBD binding monoclonal antibodies that showed a weak virus neutralization, neutralization ability against pseudotype and authentic SARS-CoV-2. To increase the isolation of antigen binding B cells, they then utilized both biotinylated RBD and spike protein to select for antigen binding B cells through magnetic B separation. A total of 8,528 distinct IgG1 presenting antigen binding clonal types were detected, and 79 ideal candidates were shown to have significant neutralization effects. This research indicates the importance of antigen coupled magnetic Bs in neutralizing antibody isolation. ACRO has developed the S1 couple and RBD couple magnetic beads to help researchers selecting the potent therapeutic anti SARS CoV 2 antibodies. The trimeric state of spike protein is also required to develop a serological test kit for COVID 19. NIH has published a paper describing the development of an elastic kit for serial surveys of the SARS CoV 2 pandemic. The trimeric structures of SARS-CoV-2 spike protein was first verified by analytical size exclusion chromatography and transmission electron microscopy, and then deployed in elastic kit. In addition to unconjugated antigen product used in serological test care, the biotinylated SARS-CoV-2 recombinant antigen is also employed in commercial chemiluminescent immunoassay products. On May 29, Simmons Health Media Diagnostics receives FDA emergency use authorization for its SARS CoV 2 total antibody test. The total antibody test has demonstrated 100% sensitivity and 99.8% specificity in identifying SARS CoV 2 antibodies. The antigen used in the antibody test is biotinylated SARS CoV 2 recombinant antigen which bind the streptavidin-coated microparticles 
and capture anti SARS CoV 2 antibodies in the specimen. After successfully producing the spiked fiber protein, we also produced S1 subunit, RBD, and the nucleocapsid protein. We not only offer these antigen products to biopharmers and academic institutes, but also provide a custom version of these proteins, which are specifically designed and optimized for serological test kits. Spike-derived proteins are produced from HEC-293 cells, while nuclear capsid proteins are either yielded from HEC-293 cells or E. coli cells. The antigens are expressed with a variety of tags, including HIS, human FC, mouse FC, and HIS AVI tag, which could meet the needs of colloidal glowinacy, hemiluminescence immunoassay, and elastic development. Here is the list of our products specifically designed for serological test kits, and you can contact us if you want to know more about these products. The glycosylation state of spike protein is another focus for SARS-CoV-2 antigen products. Recently, a team used the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein produced from hac 293 f cells to study the composition of site-specific unlinked glycans, as well as the degree of sequence occupancy on the protein using a mass spectrometer. All 22 glycans on the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein were identified and 18 of those N glycosides were conserved between SARS-CoV and SARS-CoV-2 spike proteins. The abundances of these glycans are summed into oligomanos, hybrids, and complex type glycosylation, revealing the extensive heterogeneity in N glycan composition and site occupancy. Besides, the diverse signals arising from heterogeneous complex type glycosylation are simplified by the summation of glycan intensities into a more limited range of structural categories. Another team from the University of Georgia deployed high-resolution LCMS to study the glycopeptides digested from recombinants of CoV-2 subunit S1 and S2 expressed in hex 3 cells. They identified partial N-glycan occupancy on 17 out of 22 N-glycosylation sites with a combination of high nanos and complex type, but no hybrid type glycans. And interestingly, they observed two unexpected O glycosylation modifications on the receptor binding domain of the spike protein subunit S1. This study suggests the heterogeneous nature of glycosylation of some CoV2 spike proteins. Two studies show that the neutralizing antibody could recognize the glycan attached to the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. One team from Switzerland isolated an antibody from sub survivor, which displays potent neutralizing ability against SARS-CoV-2. By solving the crystal structure of the antibody and the RBD complex, they demonstrated that the CDRH3 and CDRL2 in the antibody sandwich the SARS-CoV-2S glycan 143 at position as heroin, 343. Another team from China isolated a potent neutralizing antibody from SARS-CoV-2 convalescent patient. They also determined the crystal structure of the antibody and RBD complex and demonstrated that their antibody interacts with unlinked glycan on as heroin, 165 on RBD. This studies indicate that the glycans attached to SARS-CoV-2 spike protein may play a critical role in antibody recognition, and the fully glycosylated spike protein can be used as probe to screen the neutralizing antibody. The spike protein S1 and RBD products from ACRO are naturally glycosylated when expressed in human cells, and they are able to be employed in SARS-CoV-2 antibody isolation. Recently, a paper published by NIH has shown that different RBD constructs have distinct signals when used in developing serological elector assays. The two RBD constructs from Primer Lab at Mount Sinai and Reagan Institute were compared, and the construct from Reagan Institute displayed stronger signal with a recombinant RBD antibody. Agro also got feedback from our customers that the appropriate RBD construct can determine the sensitivity and specificity of elastic case. 
We are currently working on optimizing the RBD construct to increase the sensitivity while maintaining the sensitivity of the care product. And these products will be launched at the end of June. In addition to offer SARS-CoV-2 antigen products, Agro collaborated with its partner to develop anti-SARS-CoV-2 neutralizing antibodies as well. 15 antibodies were isolated from SARS-CoV-2 infected patients, and all of them combined S1 uh, subunit of SARS-CoV-2. One of the antibodies with name 483 show higher binding affinity with ACE2 as compared with RBD with affinity constant of about 25 nanomolars, suggesting it could be a potent neutralizing antibody against SARS-CoV-2. In fact, analysis, the binding of SARS-CoV-2 S1 protein to viral E6 cell surface ACE2 was inhibited by increasing concentration of these 15 SARS-CoV-2 antibodies. The inhibitory effects on S1 ACE2 interaction of these antibodies are a bit different, as shown in the figures in this slide. Agra also tested the virus species specificity of these antibodies, and the antibody 4A3 can only recognize the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, but not the SARS-CoV spike protein. We are also working on testing the specificity of this antibody against other coronavirus spike proteins, and the result will be updated on our website. In order to map the epitope of these antibodies, APRO has conducted competitive SPR assay and categorized these antibody epitopes in six regions. Now, lots of diagnostic companies are interested in developing SARS-CoV-2 test kits by employing antibody sandwich to detect the SARS-CoV-2 antigen in the blood. The pair of antibodies can be selected from different epitope groups. In addition, Two antibodies recognizing different epitopes can be used to treat COVID-19 in combination. APRO noticed that several RBD mutants have been reported in some strains of SARS-CoV-2, and we generated the mutant protein products to characterize the difference between wild-type and mutant RBDs. ELASA and SPR results have shown that the RBD mutants that, that was shown in this table combine ACE2 with 2 to 6 fold higher affinity compared with wild-type RBDs. These mutant RBDs can be used to test the neutralizing ability of any SARS-CoV-2 antibody to exclude the possibility that the mutation in RBD makes the protein unrecognizable for the antibody. We tested the binding ability between our anti-SARS-CoV-2 antibodies and the RBD mutants. These antibodies all show similar binding affinity with RBD mutants and wild-type RBD in SPR assay. In addition, the antibodies can effectively inhibit the interaction between RBD and ACE2. These studies indicate that RBD mutants developed by ACRO are useful research reagents to verify the broad spectrum neutralizing antibodies against different strains of SARS-CoV-2. Now, this will be the last slide of this presentation. Thanks everyone for attending today's webinar. We're doing a raffle for everyone. You will have the chance to win our adorable llama. They're very popular among our customers. If you have not already entered this raffle, you can go to our website and enter it. We will contact you within three business days if you win the llama. Okay, that's all for my presentation. And now I would like to answer the questions from the audience. Thank you, Dr. Yang, for an excellent presentation. We've received a few questions already but we'll give the rest of you a moment to enter your questions in the Q&A box to the left side of the slide. I'd like to thank Acrobiosystems for sponsoring today's event. Also, be sure to check out the resource list box to the right of your screen, where you can download a featured white paper. Now, back to Dr. Yang for Q&A. Our first question, does ACRO have products of membrane and envelope protein of SARS-CoV-2? Uh, thanks for this question. ACRO Biosystem has already launched the envelope protein product, and you can search for this product on our website. Um, the membrane protein product is still under development. We hope we could offer this product at the end of June. And if you are interested in this product, Please pay attention to the updates on our website. 
Great, thank you. Our next question is, did ACRO provide non-structural protein of SARS-CoV-2? Oh, yes. Uh, since some non-structural proteins are very promising targets for uh, antiviral drug development, ACRO Biosystem also developed a series of non-structural protein products, including serpent-like protease, non-structural protein 1, 7, and 8, etc. Please search for the non-structural protein products for uh, of South Coke 2 on ACRO's uh, website for more detailed information. Great, thank you, Dr. Yang. Our next question. I wonder if ACRO has verified the trimeric state of your spike protein product under electron microscope. Oh, oh well, uh, we're confident that our spike uh, extracellular domain protein product is in trimeric state because we have already conducted set models to prove that. Uh, but recently, a couple of our customers have asked for the electron micrograph of this product. Uh, probably they prefer to believe uh, what they see, and the electron micrograph is a very straightforward way to show if the spike protein is in uh, is a trimer in solution. Apple is now working on collecting images of its uh, spike extracellular domain protein product under electron microscope. And I think we can provide the data in a week or two. Great, thank you. How did you know the antibody product from Afro had neutralizing activity? Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, the anti sub cov 2 neutralizing antibody offered by Afro was isolated from sub cov 2 infected patients. And the antibody recognizes spike protein RBD and it can block the interaction between RBD and ACE2. Uh, we also collaborated with our partner to perform virus inhibition assay. And this antibody shows high neutralizing potency against both pseudo, uh, pseudotype and authentic SARS CoV 2. Great, thank you. I noticed that you have nucleocapsid protein products produced from E. coli and 293. Is there any difference between them? Oh, well. These two products have the same expression construct, and they show similar binding ability to uh, nuclear capsid protein antibody. Some of our customers who develop diagnostic kits have told us that their kits are with low false positive results when using the nuclear capsid protein produced from eukaryotic expression system. Well, we don't really know why, but we guess the reason is uh, the nuclear capsid protein expressed in HEC293 cells are with less contaminants that can be detected by a human immune system. Great. Our next question, is it possible to license out the neutralizing antibodies? Oh, sure. Uh, the neutralizing antibodies can potently inhibit sars cov 2 cell entry, and we think it's a very promising candidate to be used as set therapeutics to treat COVID-19. We are looking for partners to develop this product into clinical trial study, and we would be very pleased to license out this product. Thank you. That's all the time we have for questions today. Thank you, Dr. Yang and Acro Biosystems for a great session. This session was recorded. You'll receive a notification in 24 hours when the on-demand session is available for viewing. Before you log off, please do take a moment to complete the feedback form so we can continue to improve your Digital Week experience. On behalf of Informa Connect, Life Sciences, have a great day.